following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls. Now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Um, those of you that got the memo about selling the Swiss franc yesterday, uh, I'm sure you're quite happy today. You only dropped $35,000 a contract. Unfortunately, that was a joke, folks. I don't like to joke about the markets, but when you see something like that happen, that is certainly a joke. I want to cover that next, but I wanted to start out with the uh, crude oil today because we've had a $8 a barrel rally uh, from the bottom. And we haven't had a rally like that since July. Um, that tells us that there could be a bottoming forming now. Now, the one that I've posted into Tiger TV today, you know, shows that we are, uh, you know, very, very oversold. And we are completing that rally. Now, if we go down to a, a smaller time frame, uh, say a 30 minute, you'll see that we did make a Gartley pattern on the uh, upside during that rally uh, today. And all we're going to do now is to see we're right at a 61% retracement in crude oil as we're speaking uh, right now. We just hit that just about, uh, oh, 20 or 30 minutes ago. So we're going to find out if that's going to be the uh, spot where oil, uh, you know, makes its stand from and uh, starts to finally move higher. The heating oil that we talked about uh, on yesterday's show uh, rallied about 10 cents. Uh, a gallon, which was also quite good, but it's still, you know, too early in the game to really uh, understand where we are. The real excitement, folks, is uh, is certainly in the um, the markets for uh, forex and uh, some of the other things that we look at. But I, I really need to talk to you a little bit about the um, this move in the Swiss franc because it's an outlier event. It's equivalent to a crash, uh -huh, easy crash. Uh, that we had in 1987 in the foreign exchange markets. Uh, this market dropped $30,000, $35,000 in a matter of 20 minutes on the announcement of what uh, France was going to. <laughs> it wasn't France, was it? It was Switzerland. Sorry about that. But I wanted to bring up and show you on the 30-minute chart what actually happened. Uh, there was virtually no trading from the area of 102 all the way down to uh, 74. So if you figure that out, you know, you're talking about a little over $30,000, uh, almost $40,000, as a matter of fact. And then we've what we've done is we rallied back uh, from 74 all the way up to 90, which is a $16,000 rally. So we've had an equivalent of a almost a forty thousand dollar move in the Swiss franc. Now, folks, this is real money that they're talking about here. This is central bank type stuff. Uh, this is the stuff that the banks are heavily involved in. And if you've got a couple of big banks that are on the wrong side of this, big time, which uh, you know we had this happen in 1998 with Long Term Capital and John Merriweather. If we have something like that happening again. Uh, in this Swiss franc, this is going to cause some, you know, uh, really shaking of the tree uh, across all financial markets. The Swiss is one of the, you know, the uh, more preferred places to put your money, at least it should be. And it's still, uh, you know, relatively uh, very, very strong. So it's important that we realize that these moves that we're having are are really quite uh, phenomenal. And this is what we've been expecting. You know, this this uh, this expectation of seeing these uh, big moves has not been uh, a surprise. You know, we've been waiting for this increased volatility to come in, you know, for quite some time now. Now, if we switch over, uh, I'm going to do some currency stuff here, folks. So bear with me here because it's very important because this is where all the money comes. It funds all the speculation that we do. And uh, we'll take a look at it here. You'll notice that we have a, we're within about, uh, we're only about 400 points away 
uh, three or 400 points away now in the euro for the 61% retracement, which is a big ABCD, which I really think's got a really strong possibility of holding because uh, you go back over the last four years, uh, it's a perfect ABCD down at that level. It's the exact 61% retracement from the low of 2000. So this is going to be really, really interesting, you know, where we stand uh, at this point. So um, keep an eye on this euro. Um, I believe we are going to go lower. We had a chance today. We've had a 300-point um, a rally. Excuse me. A three. Let's try it again, Larry. We've had a better than 300-point uh, move again in the euro today because we dropped uh, well over 200 points, rallied back 100 points, and then came down. So it's 400 points in the swing today in the euro. That also makes it uh, an outlier event. We just made new lows on the day uh, just a little while ago. So that tells us that, you know, it's most probably still heading, you know, to the downside. In fact, it's amazing that the stocks have held up as well as they've done. Uh, if you look at, the, we'll look at some price swings in stocks a little bit later, but because this is the commodity hour, I wanted to spend a little bit more time with some of the commodities that, uh, you know, we like to look at. The next one we're going to look at, of course, is the gold market because we've um, been rather friendly to this uh, ever since uh, the middle of um, uh, early December when we completed the, uh, the first re retracement down at the 786 level which was part of the 135 pattern that finally formed. And now we've went up and we've hit the 61% uh, retracement for the high we made in last June. So uh, we've made a very, very significant spot here uh, in the gold market to hold uh, this level. Now, as you recall, we were talking uh, yesterday about the, uh, the gold-silver index, that it had a, you know, a really nice pattern forming there. That should take us a, a bit higher, and uh, we have started to see that, but it still has not completed the larger ABCD pattern that we're waiting to see. It hasn't taken out the highs of just a few days ago as of yet. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to. It's just telling us that we're very, very close you know, to a completed pattern in this. In fact, we've completed it now uh, in the gold market. The question is, is, is the gold going to correct from this level? Uh, like it usually does. Now, this is the area that we've been waiting for. Uh, when we were down at 1170 an ounce, uh, we said it had the possibility of $90 uh, an ounce, and we've made that. So this is the time where you don't want to be buying gold. You want to be, you know, waiting to see what the pullback is to see if this is going to be, you know, a sustained move to the upside. Now, you might miss it. Maybe gold takes off and runs to $1,300 without you on these last $40, but that's not what pattern recognition is really about. Pattern recognition is trying to pick the spots that give you the best opportunity with the best risk-reward ratio that you can come up with, and that's what we're seeing now you know, in the gold market, that the fact that we are able to do that. Now, if we take a look at silver, uh, silver also has done quite well, but not nearly as well as the gold, but that has been the case all along. But we are starting to see, you know, some indications that silver is beginning to uh, make a nice move. We have not even completed the ABCD uh, pattern that we've been watching for quite some time here because the um, we've not taken out that high at uh, 1740, which we really needed to do. So silver is lagging badly. Silver has only been able to take out the high of two days ago, whereas gold has completed the ABCD pattern. That's a, that's a huge divergence, folks. In fact, what I'd like to do is to show you what that divergence looks like so you can get an idea that the gold market is, uh, you know, really uh, a much, much stronger than the uh, the silver market, and that's uh, they should run, you know, almost uh, in tandem because they're precious metals, and they're you know they're traded similarly. So that's one of the things we're going to look at. But if we take a look at this chart, you're going to see that the silver market is uh, lagging lagging badly. You know, we have not taken out the highs of two days ago. We have not even taken out the highs from back in early December. Whereas gold has gone up and completed the ABCD pattern, uh, much like we did in the XAU. So this is the time where you want to be getting out of your, 
uh, for tradable purposes. For longer term, you can certainly stay in. But for trading purposes, this is the spot where you'd want to be covering your uh, long positions in gold uh, and also moving your stops up if you prefer to do that. But it's at a level where it's certainly going to uh, give a little bit of uh, resistance, in my opinion. You, you have to stop and think how the markets really operate. And when these markets are not really screaming to the upside, then, uh, you know, you're looking at something that could really be, uh, you know, really be catastrophic. So right now it's looking pretty good. And uh, the question is, is if we're going to get a correction and is that going correction going to be uh, enough to uh, offer another low risk opportunity to come in and uh, buy the uh, gold one more time. So right now we would be flat the gold position uh, looking for a place to buy it. Usually you'll get about a $34 correction from this level that would put us down into the $1,220, $1,230 per ounce level. And that's where we'd be looking to possibly uh, enter the position. We'd like to see that take a couple of days to unfold if it will do that. And that's, uh, you know, really what we'd like to see. Now, what we like to see and what the market likes to see is not always, uh, you know, the same thing. That's the that's the real thing. Now, we're coming up here to a break real shortly. So I wanted to cover the VIX index because it's really it's quite uh, it's quite amazing that the VIX has not uh, made new highs today, considering the fact that we made new lows in some of the indices, which is uh, sort of surprising. But it, it has held up relatively well here uh, at the 786 level, at the, tw at the 23 level. So um, the VIX index is telling us that there's not any panic you know, on the, uh, on the horizon. But if we get it above 24 and a half or something, uh, then a lookout, because then you could really be see something that would be uh, very, very catastrophic uh, to stack to stocks. And we're only halfway through the day. Uh, there's nothing really uh, earth-shaking happening in the markets. They're still down quite a bit, but, uh, you know, it's not a disaster. We've got the Dow, you know, down 74, the S&P down 15 near the lows of the day. The NASDAQ is near the lows of the day. So this is, uh, you know, the type of environment where halfway through the day, much like we had the other day on Monday, when we had the big reversal with the market up 283, then it gets unchanged, and then it starts to break down. So uh, just be really, really uh, uh, careful in here because we have not had a real, um, really bad day. And I believe that the worst day we're going to see in the first part of this move will be a move of uh, 720 points to the downside in one day in the Dow. And that won't even be breaking a record because the record comes in at 12, or excuse me, at 777 that we had. So we got to take a break here. The Dow down 80, uh, gold still up 27. We'll be right back after these words. you feel if you had a powerful decision-making tool that has the ability to find high probability trading opportunities across multiple time frames in equities currencies and futures search no more take advantage of the best trade with the Taz profile scanner trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to help them make the best and most accurate decisions scan over a thousand equities currencies and futures instruments for high probability trading setups utilizing the Taz architecture as seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time, for TFNS subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. Subscribers will also gain access to the December 9th workshop with John Logan. There's no obligation to pay anything. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Larry takes your phone calls now. now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and what I've uh, tried to post, well, I have posted into uh, Tiger TV is the uh, chart of um, the Treasury bonds. And as you can see, uh, this market has um, exceeded the 786 retracement here. Uh, what we're looking at is a butterfly pattern uh, on, the, on the daily chart. However, what you need to do is you really need to take a look at this uh, on the uh, long-term weekly basis in both notes and bonds because as Basil was talking about, with the rest of the world going to zero or negative interest rates. We now have negative interest rates in Japan, uh, Switzerland, and Germany. And um, the uh, hopefully we'll get it here so that everybody can buy a car and they can make, the government will make payments for you, which is really a pretty good deal. So we'll have to, uh, you know, keep an eye on that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look now at the weekly chart of the uh, Treasury bonds. And you can see that we have made a, a breakout above the 786 level. And we are uh, most probably, you know, heading towards uh, maybe even new highs. <clears throat> the old high that we had back in June of 2012 uh, was when uh, we were talking about uh, this number of 160 in Treasury bonds. At that time, 156 was the lead contract. And uh, I made a small wager, uh, life and death more or less, with Tom O'Brien that if uh, the bonds hit 160, that I would take a ride on his uh, one of his uh, uh, one of his ships, one of his sailing ships, and uh, we would go out into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, he did promise me that it would be a one-way ticket, so that is not a bad deal. So we'll see if it makes 160 or not. The way it's going, anything could happen. We've got tremendous volatility coming in. 
in now, folks. We've been expecting this for some time now. The currency markets are certainly telling us that. And the currency markets, you know, they reflect real cash money, folks. So some of these banks, uh, some of these banks made a lot of money on the short Swiss. Some people lost a lot of money on the short Swiss. That's always the the name of the of the tune. But the way that it went down, with that much volatility, down thirty five thousand and then up ten thousand, that that is not. That's an outlier event of uh, historic proportions. So that really does mean something. I wish I could give you more information on what it really does mean. Uh, but all I can tell you is that it's very, very important, you know, from that standpoint. That's uh, really what uh, what I'm trying to look at. Now, I wanted to cover uh, the Treasury notes here because they are looking, uh, they are just getting ready to take out the weekly highs from September which happened to be right at a 61% retracement. And you'll be able to see this in just a second. You'll see where we are with that particular pattern because uh, we are within just about uh, four or five pips of taking that out. Uh, and that we'll see if that's going to make a, a big difference. Now you're seeing, uh, you know, you're seeing the treasury bonds already above the 786 approaching a double top from 2012. But the shorter term, the notes, the five years and 10 years, uh, they are only at the 61% retracement. That's an indication of a flattening yield curve. That is one of the things that is usually present when stocks you know, go down quite a bit. So keep in mind, if that happens, uh, do we do have a flattening yield curve, and this could be another reason why stocks, you know, would go down. Uh, right now, the VIX index is holding up relatively well. There doesn't seem uh, to be a lot of fear in the market. But if you get this Dow down, you know, say uh, 200 points today, you're going to be looking at some real serious moves to the downside. Thus far, we've held up incredibly well. Uh, even even uh, Germany, which had a 600-point move today from the 9,800 level, went from 9,900 down to 96, and then it went back and made new highs. So you had 300 points down, 300 points up in the German market today, uh, given all the news that's been happening through Switzerland. How that all interacts with the currency markets, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, totally sure. All I know is that this volatility is here to stay we're going to see more and more of it and this makes it a pattern recognition uh, traders dream because you do have some tremendous opportunities and uh, if you're not following what the fundamentals are they're trying to feed you it gives you a pretty good chance of entering some of these trades you know without a uh, you know without uh, worrying about what what do you think is going to happen next but for god's sakes folks i don't care what you're trading now if you're trading uh uh marbles or whatever uh, you have to use stops in these markets because you can just see what happened in the swiss franc had you been in that position last night you would have been uh you know really in bad trouble now the swiss was in a negative mood so you should have been on the short side but if you didn't you got to be in big trouble okay we got to take a break here the dow's only down 65 we're holding okay so far gold still up about 27 dollars and silver still up about 10 cents Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have our first caller today. Um, it's uh, Priceline Charlie from La, La Paz, Mexico today. Are you there, Charlie? Um, oh. You looking for me, Larry? Oh, Mike, how are you? I guess you're up first. I'm sorry. This is, must be Thailand, Mike. Sai YD. Sorry about that. Um, no, no, no. Anyway. That's okay. I don't know. I don't know the. Uh, Hold on. Gotta it's not a problem. Price. Go right ahead. I got to look up Priceline to get my act together here. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not necessary. Give me your question, Mike, and we'll go on with the next question. Not a problem. All right. Well, I, I did some uh, stuff here. Um, I thought you might be interested in, and it's with the. Uh, the NYA. Okay. Can you hear me okay, by the way? It's perfect. Just like you were sitting right next to me at one of the coffee shops in Chiang Mai or someplace. All Go right, ahead, my great. friend. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Um, from the September 4th high, right, um, of what do we have, uh, 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 11108 in the NYSE, right? I'm going to round these numbers off. And then we went all the way down to the October, mid-October low of 9886. Are you with me so far? Yes, I posted it into the room, so go right ahead. All right. The, uh, the retracement on that, the 618, would have been 10641. That's, again, that's 10641. Okay? Now... We blew right by that. You remember? You, you, you oh, can yes. see it, right? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Now, 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch up with you here. Okay. Now the next, I got to use my own chart here. Uh, all right. Now we rose all the way up to, uh, um, you know, we had a failure. We didn't reach an all-time high, but we hit 11068 at the end of November on like uh, November 25th, right? Yes, sir. Okay, then we went back down on December 16th. We made a low of 10360, okay? Now, the retracement on the 618 would have been 10797. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay, now we went up to 11008, okay, at the end of um, December. Uh, I think it was December 26th, and we went right back down to um, 10450, around that area. Yes. The retracement on that... Um, let me see. Uh, th th that would have been the January 6 high, and the the, uh, the 618 would have been 10798. Now, uh, 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 now we go to the next one. We 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 go back down on that. No, I'm confusing myself here. Well, listen. Anyway, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about that. I get confused okay. a lot, Mike. All right. In a nutshell, here's what I'm trying to say. Um, the last three numbers that we failed, that we kept blowing by that 618, I ha I, I, uh, we're about at 10797, then we had 10798, and then we had 10792. Those are pretty darn close numbers, wouldn't you agree? Yes, they are. So what I'm thinking here, I don't know if you've ever heard of this term before, we're getting like this synergy. We're getting a massive consolidation pattern in the NYA, and we're getting a synergy, and I call this synergy. Now, you know what synergy is with the planets, right? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just repeating these uh, questions. I know you know what it is, just for your audience, you know? Sure. So anyway, we're... That that that's about your synergy, and that's your that's your reference point is about the uh, is about the 107. We'll round it off to 800. And if you look at the last high made in, on the NYA, it was on the uh, let me see here the 12, uh, um, 11, 10, 9. Mike, we, we're going to have to move. Mike, we're going to have to move along here because I got three other callers that are that are waiting. Would you be so kind as maybe give us a call back on Wednesday? Because, you know, Monday we have a holiday. Okay, well, that's, not, that's nice, you know. But, uh, otherwise, you know, otherwise I can't, can't get people to call in. And when they... I'm, I'm expecting another rally here is, is what I'm trying to tell you. Do you see? Okay. Well, that could certainly well, happen. We've held up so well today. Yeah, I, I should have emailed you before, but I, I'll let you go. And um, anyway, uh, I should have given you more a better overview before I went over all this. Not a I problem, called. Mike. And listen, I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Give us a call then, okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks all a lot. All right, buddy. Bye. You bet. And now I think we have Priceline Charlie calling. Is that true? That's me, Larry. How are you, Larry? Well, I don't know. We got you out at uh, 1025, and it's 1009 now. How do we stand? Are we still friends? Oh, we're absolutely friends, because you know okay. why? <laughs> you said to me, we're coming to a stop sign, and we're on the road. You know, I'm on the right, and another car is coming in from the left, and we're trying to figure, are we going up or are we going down? It's, and I wasn't totally out. I only took 15% off, and when I saw it bounce, to the 1,060-something level, I says, uh-oh. And then it fell down that same day, right back to the bottom. I says, I missed the opportunity, but the market, there's always another train coming by. You know, there's That's plenty for sure. of As long as you stay cool, calm, and collected, you're fine. And frankly, when I saw it go down, it was the next day, 
that I came back in, because I, I usually like to think this over, and the market can sometimes surprise you. And I says, well, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm still in this corner, and I'm waiting for him to either go so I can pass, or I go and, you know, but the point is, I didn't want to take risk, because I didn't know if they're going to bounce this again. I waited patiently, and then I won. I actually bounced back. These are my trades, okay? I bounced back at 1,025. I shorted again 1,030, 1,028. So I didn't miss that much down, okay? That's right for sure. Right about where I came in and took myself out, right above that point, I said, if it starts to go back the other way, it doesn't continue up, I'll come back in. I came back in, and I even shorted today because first I could see that we were headed down. SPY was showing me the fact that we are headed down, the market is trending down. And I says, well, the support level was 1,017 approximately, and today we broke it. And as soon as it went down to 1,013 and bounced back up, it didn't go past 1,017, so I jumped in again at 1,016. So to me, the market is telling me, okay, you're at a stop sign, wait, wait your turn. And when the other person went by and he says, I'm going down, I said, well, you're going my way, I'll hit your ride with you. I kept it simple in those terms. That's the best way to do it, my friend. Yeah, and you know what? I didn't lose anything. I patiently waited for the opportunity, got my chance, and here we are today. I think we're at 1,008. Mm -hmm. So, oh, 1,009, 1,010, but we broke the support level, and really the next part comes with you, since you did the Fibonacci retracement. We bounced up. Where do you see us now bouncing down? Any help with that? 942, my friend, 942 is, I think, where we're going to go with the price line. Okay, and as we all know, we're big boys. This is... An approximation. There are no guarantees in the stock market. <laughs> um, Amen. I, I do want to bring out a, 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 another point. You asked me the other day about trucks, mm -hmm. and if, if I may take a moment, a U.S. government is holding truck sales. They're dumping in their inventory, and the tow truck that cost the U.S. government 168,000 and change, about 169,000. This thing can lift anything. You can shoot bullets into its tires and it'll keep going because it's got compressors that even though they're holding it, it'll pump air into those tires and that truck will keep going. It was auctioned wow. yesterday. Wow. This thing is a monster. I mean, this is a beautiful machine. This is the pride of American military because without trucks and ammunition and the food and supplies, nobody can win a battle. This and this is, is the truck that when you, when, you tr when you break down, this is the truck that comes and saves you. It was auctioned yesterday, 169000 It sold for $6,500. That's more than the tax on it, isn't it? <laughs> it wow. Probably. But you know what? Selling a truck like that for 6500 the scrap value was higher. I'm sitting here. I, I kept saying, I kept, yeah, I called my client. You want to buy one? Because it takes a little bit of time, like a couple of minutes. He's looking, what am I going to do with it? The point is, if you had a need for a big tow truck, you got a bargain yesterday. And the rest of the trucks sold in the range of two, three, four thousand. 4000 So it's amazing how low the transportation prices are right now in terms of machinery. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a little bit more time. You have another caller, I think? I sure do. No, we uh, we have a break coming up, but uh, give me a few more minutes because we want to talk with John in Philly because he's always got some great information. Let's take another couple minutes, and we'll we'll meet with John. Okay. Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, uh, you want me to talk? Okay. This was about right now SPY is starting to break down. Is this the time that we should be looking at SVS to buy? Uh, tell me what SVS is again. SVS is, I think, a double inverse of the SPY. It's the negative SPY. 
Oh, I don't you know, know I... enough about that to uh, uh, to make it to make a statement on. All I know is I know we're going. Well, I I don't know, but I feel we're going a lot lower in stocks, uh, and it's probably going to be very dramatic and very fast, given the way these currencies are acting, and the fact that bonds. Uh, looks like they're going to go negative too. Who knows? But uh, yeah. I, that, this is going to get really nasty, and it's going to get yeah, nasty okay. in the bond market too. But not right now. I couldn't give you a. Uh, I can't give you a recommendation on that because we've sold off, you know, quite a bit from our December 29th highs, and uh, I, I just think we're going to come down a little more, and then we might have a bounce. But I, I can't say anything right here. Okay, good. I, I kind of feel the same way that we, we're not quite clear on that. But yeah. it's something to keep up in the future, to keep in mind, because when it does go down, you want to catch it. Thank you uh, for your help. Hopefully. You bet, Charlie. Thanks. And have, and, enjoy and your vacation. Thank you. Oh, we're still friends. You, you, good. Great. Okay. Now we've got John from Philly on the line. John, are you there? I am, Larry. Thanks for taking the call, sir. Thank you for waiting. I certainly appreciate it, my friend. What can I do for you today, or what can you do for us more uh, is, is better asked? <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to ask your eyes, please, on soybeans. Uh, two okay. contracts in particular, Larry. The crop that was grown last summer, that's, you know, currently in the bin and being sold and consumed, that's represented by the March contract, SH5. And yes. then there's the November contract, which represents the, the, uh, the crop that's going to be planted come May, you know, for harvest next fall. Mm -hmm. And that's XX5. And the patterns are similar, and the prices actually are similar. And I'm wondering if you can share with us, share with me, if you see a low-risk buy setup in specifically SX5. Um, okay, let me first, John, let me do SX, uh, do the spot. We'll do March first okay. because we have a Gartley pattern coming in about another 30, 30 cents lower, down around the 9.55 per bushel level uh, in the uh, spot. March contract. Yep. Now, I'm going to take me a second here to put in the uh, the new one, but that would be um, uh, that ZS, and it's uh, X5, right? That's correct. Okay, we'll put that one in, and we'll take a look at this one, and then we'll see what that pattern looks like. They should be, because of this time of the year, with the harvesting and everything, we should be pretty close to uh, a similar type pattern. Well, for some reason, it's not giving me the uh, – that's November of 05, 15, so, boy, I can't believe 15. If, when I start Larry, trading if this – If you are unable to pull that up – Uh-huh. Um, oh, I got it. I got it. It, okay. it came in. We're in good shape. Okay. okay, now that's a little bit different. See, uh, it's going to give you the same pattern. Uh, sure it is. It's going to give you the same pattern, but it's going to be down – uh, here again, you're talking only down about 20 cents at this level. So I would that would be the one I would be looking to buy would be the November of uh, 2015 uh, because, first of all, it's got a shorter distance to goal, doesn't take as much selling to get there, and uh, it still has the same pattern that we have with the March. Very good. And uh, you would actually... Um if we do get that uh, 30 cents lower on the SH5, that's the spot that you'd actually take a shot. Would that be the idea? Yeah, because you have a very low risk at that point. That's a pattern completed. It's a perfect Gartley pattern. John, we got to take a break here, but do you want to stay with us? Very good. Thank you, Larry. Okay, thank you. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back. Uh, I'm not sure if our friend Mr. Z stayed with us. John, are you still there? There I am, uh, and thanks for posting that wheat chart. in the title. Yes, that's and what I was going to try to do is because, you know, they're both, uh, well, one's a grain, the other is a oil seed, but uh, we have a... Um, it's the same type of situation occurring in wheat yep. because if it gets another 20 cents lower, we're going to be sitting right at a 786 retracement down there at $5.12 a bushel. The reason why I wanted to bring this to, to your attention, John, is the fact that the pattern that happened when the high was made uh, just recently uh, back in uh, middle of December, we had that shooting star uh, pattern that occurred in wheat. Yep. up at the uh, $6.75. In fact, uh, m most of that was uh, done overnight when uh, Putin said he was not going to allow any more exports of wheat uh, because of the, the sanctions or whatever it happened to be. And that looked like there was going to be a, a short supply. But as Rich Anderson pointed out, the only short supply was in transportation because there's, there was plenty of wheat about. But We've only had two uh, up days uh, since that time. We had one in uh, late December, and that's it. It's basically been straight down for a solid month. So we're coming into that uh, low. It's going to be very interesting to watch at uh, you know five dollars and twelve cents a bushel. That would come in very closely to what we're looking at your number in November soybeans, and then also in the March soybeans. Only 18 cents away on the wheat. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Larry. One thing I will just mention in advance, you'll be speaking, I'm sure, with Rich Anderson in, in coming weeks on your show. 
And um, I would uh, merely point to a, a setup that uh, is worth looking into on those November beans, namely this. Beans currently under 10 bucks a bushel. Of course, that contrasts to the peak in 12 up at 18. So it's a massive bear market, you know, with better crops, mm -hmm. all that jazz. Uh, we're declining now, and this decline in this time frame is perfect in the sense that this seasonally, there's a seasonal tendency for bean prices to decline amidst the harvest that goes on in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And once the harvest pressure subsides, there is typically a seasonal rally uh, from, say, March 1st into planting time here in the U.S., and then, of course, if there's adverse weather or weather scare or crop failure, that's the ingredients that can propel, you know, a major bull market. And, of course, we won't know where, whether any of those things takes place. But um, if we're making a seasonal low and the pattern set up specifically in that November contract, I think it's uh, something to look at and, and start to trade anyway. Well, you know, John, I think it's uh, important that all of our listeners pay uh, attention to what's going on in the foreign exchange markets because that's real money, real pain over there. It's not like in the futures markets where they can, you know, uh, get rid of you because you don't have enough margin at any one time because this is a cash business over there. And some of these folks, you're going to be hearing about it probably in the news where they've gotten hit really badly. I'm not talking about millions. I'm talking about probably billions in some of these markets. So, uh, I recommend everybody, if they trade foreign exchange or anything, you know, learn how to use stop protection. I know you feel like you're going to get stopped out near the high or the low of the day, but it's better to have that feeling and be out of the market than, you know, uh, the old adage, it's better to be out of a market wishing you were in than in a market wishing you were out. So be sure you use stops, everyone that's out there. I know Mr. Z is a master at uh, risk control, so you folks be really careful because these are uh, the old Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. And we are certainly there when you see a $35,000 move uh, in a currency. That would be the equivalent of about uh, 6,000 Dow points. Thanks very much, Larry. You bet, John. Uh, excellent point to make. Thank you very much. You bet. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.